1966, I went to London and I worked around London in animation, um, small animation companies. And then for four years, I lived in Greece in the mid 70s, came back to London to work on Watership Down for two years. And after that, moved to San Francisco to work on um, Plague Dogs. And after that, I worked around some small animation companies there. Then I went to work at ILM. Just before I started work at ILM, I had my first daughter, Zoe. And then I worked at ILM. Um, I came down here for six weeks to work on Frighteners. Then after that, I went to work at Disney in Southern California. And uh, Sophie was born in 1989 in San Francisco, so before we went to Southern California. And then the Disney job um, ended and I was offered a job down here. So I came down here and uh, to Weta in 2003 and worked until I retired. I really didn't ever think I'd work in film, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And like most Kiwis, I went to England, I fooled around, I went on my you know, trip around the continent. I just kind of happened into a job at Bob Godfrey Films. And Bob Godfrey, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he, um, he, he is, was a prolific animator. He made so many films and he, he loved animation so much that when he went home from work, he'd sit in his bit more, he called it, his little batch at the back of the section, and he'd just keep animating. And he and my mother were great friends and, you know, he'd, they'd been corresponding all these years. So, um, yeah, I just sort of segued into that and I started, in those days it was ink and paint, so I started doing that. And then after a while I worked in other studios around London, TVC and other ones. And uh, then of course that's how I eventually got the job on um, um, Watership Down, because I, by that time I'd had a lot of experience in ink and paint, which is what we called it in those days when it was on cell, that was cell animation. The producer of Watership Down uh, decided to return home to the US and so they, he relocated to San Francisco and opened a studio there and they wanted to make Plague Dogs, which was the next book of Richard Adams, uh, as Watership Down had been done quite well. So I was able to get a job with him and he arranged all the visas and uh, so off to San Francisco and worked on that for two years. Jurassic Park was amazing because it actually developed, it changed as we went along because a lot, a lot of the dinosaurs were going to be animatronic. And then there was a little uh, bunch of really talented animators who said, you know, we can animate this. And so the director said, okay, we'll do a test and show us. And so they did. Things like that, when you're developing the technique, actually while you're working, is pretty amazing. And it was the same on Forrest Gump. Because that was a, a film where the director would ask the people from ILM, the technical guys, can we do that? And the other technical guy would go to the CG guy, can we do that? Yeah, yeah. But some of the software wasn't written at the time that the stuff was being shot, so it was theoretical. Rotoscoping is the method that we used to incorporate different elements that are on film. In the old days, it would be a live action element and then a live action background, and they weren't shot together. Or you'd have a model that didn't build on stage and that had to go in. Um, these days, it's combining um, live action elements with CG backgrounds on the whole. When you first start rotoscoping, you, you get into these things where you're looking at the sky and you're looking at the leaves and you're, you're in your mind, you're drawing the lines around it. It's pathetic, but that's really, that happens. I've, everyone's told me that. How would I rotoscope that? <laughs> Rotoscope and paint is really one department. And, um, a very good example of a paint requirement is this film 102 Dalmatians that we made at Disney. So in, if for anyone that saw it, it was a white Dalmatian. Well, there are no white, white Dalmatians. So we had to take the spots off 
a regular Dalmatian puppy. And not only one puppy, because puppies are only puppies for a very short time, so they were just, you know, the next puppy would come in, we'd have to take. And that was scene after scene after scene. A recruiter called me and said, would I like to work at Weta in Wellington? And I said, Wellington? I know Wellington. Why would I want to go to Wellington? No, thank you. Because I love my job at Disney. But then when I found out very shortly after that our division was being closed down, I called her back up. Is that job still going? Because <laughs> I would love to come. I'll be, I'll be done as soon as I can. The horses and, and army were shot out at Paraparamu Airport on green screens. Now, you know what a green screen is. Okay, so the green screen, these were on metal stands, and the metal stands had um, sandbags to keep them from blowing away. And then the green screens only went so high, and then you had really washed out blue sky. And then under the green screen, you had you know, grass and dirt, what have you. So the things that we that were being shot against those screens were the soldiers on horseback. So the tops of the soldiers went over the green screen, the bottom, the legs, the horses' legs and tails went over the ground. So many of those. And then as I, um, you can imagine there's bright shiny helmets, they were getting uh, reflections from the sun so you couldn't see the edge tiny little horses' legs, all of that had to be rotoscoped. You can imagine the amount of movement and just just an immense amount of work. And it had to be, you know, even though they were quite small and shot, it had to be totally accurate. In Tintin, there's this fabulous Siamese cat. And I used to have a fabulous Siamese cat. And uh, so I took him into the studio for photography so they could model him to be a CG cat. But he is a very <laughs> a bit of a fraidy cat, and he kept dashing off into the dark corners of the studio. And the photographer was fabulous. And uh, Iva, she's still there, I think. And she was so patient. And we, to get, so they could get his legs, we actually had to hoist him so that he, he would even straighten his legs out. But when you see Tintin and you see that cat, that's our cat, Coco. That I think there's more and more women, and I think just with the, the times, there has to be more women. There's probably not many women VFX supervisors, and that is a really hard ask. I know a few, and uh, you know, good luck to them. It's a male-dominated environment. Um, the hours are very, very long. Some women's lives just don't work like that. And I think they have to be super tough. Whereas for a man, it's, it's sort of almost not hard, I think. Um, as I said, I, I know a few and not nearly enough. It's a fabulous job. Because it covers your, one's artistic uh, needs, uh, fabulous company, you know, friends. Um, there is a sort of artistic feeling around, well-treated. Um, depending where you work, great parties. Um, Wet is very good at that. Uh, just uh, great camaraderie and a real feeling of wanting to do your best and have fun at the same time. I loved it. It was hard to retire. <laughs>